Finally, after months of non-travel, we're excited to get back on the road again and head to David Thompson Country, one of Alberta's most beautiful destinations. But what makes it even more exciting is we've partnered with Toyota to try out their new 2020 Toyota Tundra 4x4 Crew Max TRD Pro, which is perfect for a destination like this. And I think I've never seen such a spacious truck before. The back seat is huge and I really love the black leather seats. It makes it look super sharp. As much as I'm excited to stay in cabins, I kind of wish we were camping because this thing can tow up to 10,000 pounds. We just arrived to Rocky Mountain House and we were starving. So we came to one of our favorite restaurants in town, Banks Bistro, which is a sushi place and we're so excited to have some of our favorite dishes. So we got some beef teriyaki, two kinds of sushi, the Big Bang, and definitely you shouldn't miss trying the mango tango. I love mango and this one is delicious. Rocky Mountain National Historic Site is a place that you shouldn't miss during this road trip, which we're not gonna be exploring today due to the rain, it's pouring rain. However, thankfully, we've been here before so if you haven't watched that video, don't forget to do so because it's a great place to learn about Canada and Alberta's history. Here you can learn about the fur trade, the indigenous and Métis people that used to live here, as well as David Thompson and why this area is named after him. The story of David Thompson is actually quite interesting. He's known as the world's greatest geographer and practically the man who single-handedly mapped most of Canada, which is pretty impressive when you consider how big this country is and how wild it was in those days. Even crazier, he was only 14 when he arrived here from England. He then married the daughter of a Northwest Company fur trader and a Cree mother. And that story as well is known as one of the greatest love stories in Canada. But perhaps even more remarkable than that is, despite creating the great map that basically led to the vision and creation of Canada, he and his wife and most of their kids actually died in poverty, almost forgotten. So it's really cool that the story didn't die and that we get to learn about David Thompson here and explore the region he's most known for. The David Thompson region basically starts around Caroline and Rocky Mountain House and goes all along Highway 11 and Clearwater County until you reach the Icefields Parkway. We just made it to our home for the next three nights, the Expanse Cottages, which is this nice wood cabin that pretty much fills in the middle of the forest. We're surrounded by trees and it's just a few minutes from the small town of Nordic. So let me show you inside. And we knew that it was a fully equipped cabin so we brought our own groceries to do our own breakfast and maybe lunch so come over here and it only has the one bedroom with a queen or double bed I'm not sure and here we have our bedroom well this is one of my favorite parts about staying in cabins when they have a wood-burning fireplace and tonight's a chilly night it's supposed to drop down to like four degrees so Perfect time for a fire.
Well, the weather is finally improving, so we finally made it out of our, our, our cottages. It's the afternoon already, but we're in the town of Nordic. And originally we wanted to come here to visit the mine. There's a historic site, the largest industrial historic site in Canada. And this was once a thriving mining community until that mine became abandoned in the 1950s. But unfortunately it's closed down right now due to COVID. But we still came because we're going to the Miner's Cafe. We've heard that they have some of the best pies in the province and people literally drive all the way here just for the pies. So let's get inside. So look at all the flavors of pies and he's actually gonna take us inside to have a look at them and see which one I want. This is the blueberry mango and you can see the big chunks of mango and the whole blueberry. So it's looking good for me. And here is yours, Matthew, the strawberry rhubarb. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna get this one? Because you, so, yeah. you were saying. Mm. Looks, good. Looks good too. They are a lot huge. Of ice cream. <laughs> I don't know how you can have pie without ice cream. But they said this was their most classic one, the strawberry rhubarb. And it is delicious. When we were just coming into the building, we realized that there was a sign that said girls above the door. So we just realized that this used to be the school of the town. So there was an entrance for girls and an entrance for boys. And here's where they have a museum upstairs where you can learn more about the history of this place. But it's closed due to COVID-19. However, they have some cool pictures here where we can see some of the first people that arrived to this town. So this is Martin Nordig. As you can see, this, this picture is from 1910 and he's the one who the town is named after he started the coal mine but was basically forced out around 1915 because of his german background and the war in those days these are the first six people that arrived here this is actually a picture of the mine way back in the day and then this is one of the the carts for going down into the shaft and as you can see it's made out of wood instead of metal because to get here they had to come on horseback it took about five days so bringing metal and stuff like that was just way too heavy so they had to do everything out of wood One of the things this region is known for is waterfalls. There's all kinds of them. This is probably the most popular one behind us, Crescent Falls, mainly because not only is it beautiful, but it's super easy to reach. We literally were parked probably 20 feet from where we are right now. Uh, there's another two that we're hoping to see over the next couple of days that require a little more work to get to. But this one's really easy and as you can see, very beautiful. It's my turn to drive this beautiful truck. It's a, I seriously feel super powerful, but at the same time, it's such a small drive. And we're heading back to Nordic, where we're gonna meet with Pursuit Adventures, who's gonna take us for a hike. We just arrived here at Abraham Lake. This is one of the most popular places to visit in the region. It's very beautiful. It's actually the largest man-made lake though in the province due to a dam. And we're here to do just a bunch of short hikes, see some of the scenic viewpoints. Right now we're at Windy Point and it is windy, but not as windy as it gets sometimes. Uh, but one of the most popular times to visit is actually in the winter. We've been here before. They get bubbles under the ice due to methane. So it's really beautiful to see and people love to get their pictures with them. And not too far from us is also a helicopter tour company, which we've also been on for in both the summer and the winter. And it's just a spectacular way to see the Rocky Mountains. pretty lucky because the day turned out to be okay there was just a little bit of rain here and there and we're also so lucky because every time that we drive the main highway we always see some kind of wildlife 
previous times we've seen uh, black bears, grizzly bears, of course a lot of deer. Yeah, and speaking of bears, we were actually supposed to go on another hike with Pursuit to see another waterfall and it was actually closed off because of a bear in the area, so. Yes, but we got to see wild horses for the very first time. Yeah, which is pretty cool. I had no idea that wild horses existed here, but I guess uh, back in the mining days they had horses to help them out and when it closed down, they let them go and now, now they're, they're wild. <laughs> But also yesterday we saw uh, uh, another group of horses, there's two group of horses and yesterday it was a very sad day because we actually saw uh, that one of the horses had a broken leg. Yeah and it was sad because he was really trying to like keep up with his friends but they were having none of it mm -hmm. and yeah. And tomorrow we're gonna go on a horseback ride! Yeah so more horses. <laughs> I always get a little bit nervous, but the horses know what they're doing, so we should be fine. And now I'm just trying to stay away from Matthew's horse because he's getting annoying and he's trying to kick my horse. Second crossing, it was a little bit deeper. I got a little bit wet, but it was fun. It's amazing how they can actually cross the river. I wouldn't. <laughs> I will be a chicken horse. We just made it to basically the halfway point. We're doing our 20 minute break here in the middle of the backcountry next to a beautiful river and a waterfall. And uh, how are you liking the experience? I'm loving it. I really like to be on a horse and I think it's a great way to really see the backcountry. Uh, you have beautiful scenery, the Rocky Mountains, rivers, waterfalls. And it's uh, extra special when you get to cross the rivers. We crossed it three times and uh, it just feels like an adventure kind of like. My feet are soaked. <laughs> Yes. But it's a lot of fun. Oh. <laughs> well, despite the fact that the horses really did all the work on that last hike, I think I'm probably more sore. My back, my legs, my knees, everything is pretty much sore. But the day's not over yet because we're going to do our own hike now. It's about a three hour return trip down to one of the most popular waterfalls in the area as well called Siffler Falls. And I don't know if you can see behind me, but there's a warning that there's a bear in the area. So we do have our bear spray, but we definitely hope we don't come in contact with him. Part of me, I'm always afraid of seeing a bear on the trail. We have our bear spray. We don't know if we'll know how to use it. I mean, it's pretty easy, but when you see the bear, how quickly and how good can you do it yeah can you react fast enough exactly but because also they've told us that you need to see also the direction of the wind because you can spray it and it can just go back on you so that wouldn't be very smart i matthew stop it he loves scaring me always in the trail and i know he's lying but it's still my my stomach shrinks matthew please don't <laughs> I know with that sign really makes me nervous so anyway a tip is um, it's always good to go in bigger groups but if you're just the two of you it's, it's good to be singing play some music make some noise so you can let the bear know that you're coming because they also don't want to see you right not really no so anyway so let's go let's go
Well, I'm pretty sure we just made it to Siffler Falls. They're pretty impressive. We actually didn't see any pictures beforehand, so we don't really know like what we what to expect. But we just see a sign now that says past this point, all the trails are unmarked. So we're assuming this is the end. My favorite part so far was the canyon. It's just like amazing to see that river cutting through the valley like that and the mountains in the background. It's a super easy trail. We even saw someone with a stroller, so pretty much anyone can do it. But yeah, we're gonna probably walk a little further to make sure we didn't miss anything and otherwise head back to the car. point we love it so much we were here with pursuit adventure yesterday so we decided to come back and enjoy the scenery again yeah it's definitely one of the most beautiful places around abraham lake and it's perfect for driving the truck another reason why we came here there's just so much open space and it's actually a free campground as well i definitely think we're going to come back here one day mm -hmm. but if you do come here and enjoy the free camping please take your garbage because some people don't and it's causing some problems now and we don't want to lose this yeah trust me when you see it it's amazing it's like a postcard but it's also not raining so we got to get back to the cabin because for the first time i think we're going to be able to have a campfire and we're hoping that we can enjoy some s'mores Well, today's our last day on the road trip and what a way to finish it off by coming to Ram Falls. We'd heard so many good things about this place and the road to get here is only about an hour. It's dirt road. It really feels like you're getting into the back country. And of course, one of the main positives of that is that it's much more secluded than all the other waterfalls and definitely one of the most beautiful we've ever seen. And we love trying the new Toyota Tundra. What a beautiful truck. It drives so smoothly. It's just perfect for this kind of adventure and more. And we also got so many compliments. We're really gonna miss this truck. Yeah, we're definitely gonna miss it, but we hope we inspired you to visit David Thompson country. As you can see, if you're looking for nature, it's definitely one of the best places to visit in Alberta. So if you wanna learn more about this place in Canada in general, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and visit our website at mustdocanada.com. Until the next adventure!